Welcome to Money Making Conversation. I am your host, Rashawn McDonald. Every week I tell everybody it's time to stop reading other people's success stories and start writing your own. I say that every week. We always talk about gifts. We always talk about passion. I tell people to lead with their gifts and don't let their age, friends, family, or coworkers stop them from planning or living their dreams. My interviews I do on Money Making Conversation are for you. I interview celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and what I like to call industry decision makers. My next guest is a longtime friend. My next guest yes. is Cassie Davis Patton. Cassie is starring on Tyler Perry's House of Pain, playing Ella Payne, which returns on BET for his eighth season. Tyler Perry's <laughs> House of Pain is the number one comedy series for African Americans 18 to 49, 25 to 54 in the calendar year 2020. And you can say the calendar year 2021 too, because it's already been picked up for another season. Cassie hey. Davis Patton has worked extensively over the years with Tyler Perry on his stage plays, TV shows, and movie. He she made a lot of money with Medea. Just Medea is her, really her middle name. She also attended. <laughs> Uh, Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, and majored in music. Her big acting break was her role in Spike Lee's film, School Days. Please welcome. When I knew her back in the day, she was just Kathy Davis, but now she, you know, she got a man now, so now she's Cassie Davis Patton. So from Tyler Perry's House of Pain, my good friend, Cassie Davis Patton. How you doing, girl? Come on, Sean McDonald. <laughs> yes. You better introduce me. Yeah, do, do, do a good job, Cassie. Do, do a good job. Hey, Rashawn, no, you did what you normally do. <laughs> thank you. You, thank you know you, st you still got it. I appreciate it. You know the amazing that's, thing. Hey, that's, that's you, one and one. No, uh, oh you God. when we start calling names? Oh, come on, girl. You said one and one. That took me off. That's 1989. One and one, baby. Mm -hmm. One and one. Uh, Attorney Anderson. Come on, y'all. Absolutely. You guys were the you guys were a mad team of brilliant black men that knew what y'all wanted to do and did it. All of you. Steve, you, Juan Ho, <laughs> uh, Attorney Anderson, um, James Boomerang. Absolutely. Man, you guys were an awesome team and y'all taught me so much. I was I was at the house mm -hmm. and um, you guys were in the field and you were working. Your ethics were good and um, you were suited all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys would come back to the house and you guys would discuss strategies and I would eavesdrop and um, I learned and took notes. And um, I do owe a lot of my success to the wisdom that you guys imparted in me when you didn't even know I was listening and you didn't even know I care, but um, I just appreciated everything that you guys came back home and discussed and made happen. You know, it wasn't just like you were blowing smoke signals. You There was actually fire and there was a product that you guys um, put together. And that was me and the boys. And that was, it was just so much yes. that you all did. And you, you know, you guys were the kings of comedy before the kings of comedy came out. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, Cassie, I'm talking to Cassie Davis. You know, she's a star of Tyler Perry's Halls of Pain. Well, that's one of the things she's a star of because she really is a brilliant talent. And then she's just talking about our history. The person she brought up, one and one, that's one hole. Just a little, little walk down history lane. He was Steve's manager before I became his manager. And he was yep. all our best friend. And uh, we lost him to sacadocious, the same illness that took Bernie Mac, which is ironic that two yes. people in Steve Harvey's life that he was close to lost to the same heart ailment. And uh, yes. and, uh, and that, that allowed me to come into his life. And Ricky Anderson was the our attorney. He's still our, the attorney in our lives today. After all these years, uh, African American attorney. That's what she was talking about. Black men who was, yes. was breaking ground. We were breaking ground because the rules were different back in 1992, 95. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> that's exactly right. That's and we, exactly right. And, and there uh, was a there was a hustle that you guys came out with and it was just like everybody get somebody that's that's what we used to say in our high school everybody get somebody don't let them shoot and that is what you all did you all steve was in charge of this one was in charge of this attorney anderson handled this and Rashawn, you really uh galvanized a whole lot of things <laughs> you, were, you, were, you, were, you were carrying two brief two brief briefcases and you know thank you for that compliment cassie but the thing about our relationship you know, is that I always saw a talented person and but you were not doing anything with your career at the time when I came into your life. But you were. I it, wasn't. Why? 
uh, you know what? I, I, I got my feelings hurt. Mm-hmm. I was up for a part on hanging with Mr. Cooper and I thought I was going to be on that show and I was doing storyboards. I was, you know, going into meetings with the executives and I, I learned that I did not get the part when the show aired and wow. it hurt my feelings so bad. I just didn't understand the rejection of the business. I thought they really liked what they saw and I thought they meant what they said. And um, it became just one lie after another. Mm-hmm. That's one of Chip Fields songs. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I, I just thought that it would probably be best for me to pull out Mm -hmm. and not pursue this career because, you know, I could have had anger issues and I did not want to, you know, take my anger out on someone. So I just stopped and started working with young people at Wendy school. Right. Um, And I just, I just fell in love with, you know, what the art really could do for the lives of those young people. And then Mr. Perry, Oh my God, he saw me doing a favor for someone and asked me to come and be a part of his empire. And I was like, look, I don't have no time for that. Y'all say one thing, y'all do another thing. So just leave me alone because I really don't want to have to catch a case. <laughs> don't lie. Just If you're going to do it, do it. And if you're not, then don't. And I must say, that man has kept his word. You guys kept your word, but I... I just got my feelings hurt. I was so bruised by being rejected. And I just didn't understand the rejection part of the pursuit. And, you know, I, I, and I, there's important people hear that, Cassie Davis, because of Cassie Davis Patton. I'm going to talk different periods. That was Cassie Davis back then. She's Cassie Davis Patton now. And because Hollywood is about rejection. And a lot of people aren't ready for that. They think that they can ride with the best look. They've won some awards locally. And they get there and they'll walk you through that door and they'll say, come back five, 10, 15 times and then say, sorry. Or some of them, on your case, didn't even say sorry. No, they didn't even say sorry. I didn't even, I was at home waiting. I had already gone and picked out a home in um, Toluca Lake in Los Angeles. I was just like, oh yes, when they send me my money, I can buy this house. I was with a realtor and I was at home one evening and I saw the advertisement come up or the advertisement as you guys <laughs> called it back. But then it was an advertisement <laughs> and it was, um, that brilliant actress, uh, Nell Carter. Mm-hmm. And I it couldn't be mad, you know, if you're going to lose, why not lose to her? Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, but I, I, it just hurt me so bad. Um, I just said, I, I think I better just sit out and just wait. And that's what I did. We know and, it's really um, interesting. And, wanna... and then what, what was proven is if it's meant to be for you, then it's going to be. And it has been a great ride for me, even the hurt. Um, you know, I can really appreciate all of this joy because I do understand what the hurt can feel like. So, well, you I, know, it's really, I, it really funny ride, you say Sean. that. It's really funny you say that, Cassie, because, you know, Steve Harvey used to always say, because I didn't know you were that talented when, you know, I just knew you were very nice. You was always punctual. You was always a beat. And, I, and then Steve said, you know, she's talented, right? I go, huh, what do you mean? He said, that girl right there can sing. I go, Cassie, Cassie can sing. She never showed me that. You were just, you had just like, just, just disconnected. You had not even, all the talent that God gave you, you just like shoved it in a box and say, I'm done. How yeah. did you get out of that box? How did you get out of that moment to say, you know, some it's time before Tyler Perry said, Hey, I want to bring you on board. What brought you out of that cocoon? God. Mm -hmm. You know, when I realized that the talent was not mine to bury and was not mine to shove in a box and that um, it was his to showcase to his people. And it was something that he would use me to do and free some people and bring some joy to some people and and help some people. So the many stories that I now hear um, uh, about how the messages from House of Pain has help somebody's family or somebody's grandmother or, you know, I, I have a friend in Hollis Springs right now. She watches all of Tyler Perry's, Tyler Perry's movies <laughs> and then the sitcoms and um, she it just blesses her that I'm a part of it. But it was, it was God that 
that made me do it, but the vehicle really, really, really was Chip Fields. And when I met Chip Fields and she wanted me to be in a play, it was like, oh, uh, are you going to do what you say you're going to do? And right. she did. Mm -hmm. And after that, I just began to trust her. And then I came into Wonder Love and I met you guys. And, <laughs> um, and I just said, you know what? There are some good people here. So rejection is a part of it. But I just did not know. I didn't like being rejected. Who, who likes being rejected? Right. And so I did not understand it. And I, uh, you know, in my innocence, I made plans for some money that I did not have. So that has taught me a lesson that you can't spend what you don't have. Absolutely. And um, and there's always research that we need to do. And I did not do my research. I was just taking people at their face value. And um, and, and I still do it. But I, I, I have to listen for those key words that that I, I could have known that I was not being chosen for that part. But I just did not understand the lingo and I did not do my research. No, nope, no problem. Cause you, you know, look I at did you not now. have wise counsel. Well, I, we did not, I, I didn't have any counsel really at all. And so, um, but now I have wise counsel. That's right. That's right. Here, here's the beauty of it. Because cause Cassie just throw out names. Like she's Wendy Raquel Robinson. Like Wendy Raquel Robinson was, uh, was the principal on Steve Harvey's sitcom. And of course, she's went yeah. on to do the game and many other great series. Chip Fields oh. is Kim Fields' mother. One of the oh, most. Oh, I was to explain it. Absolutely, oh. come on oh, now, you, you all these landmark names. Don't worry, I, I got uh, you back. I got yeah, you back. Yeah, that's what they are. Though they are, they, they're, they're landmark. They're legends. All no, of them. Absolutely, Kim Fields' Kimmy, mother, Wendy, Steve. Are you kidding? <laughs> Cedric did today. I mean, you guys were there. I saw you. I mm -hmm. saw you guys. Yeah. Stumbling, I saw you not know anything. When Steve came, he'll tell you. He came to Chip's house, and we were just. I was like, he got a job. Yes, they gave him a job. Yes. He can't even read. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She tells the Steve truth. Steve will tell you. I was just like, what? I was like, ugh. And he was just like, he was reading his script. And he was saying, Steve sits down. <laughs> I was looking at Chip. I was saying, he's reading the directions. <laughs> what is this? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's a beast now. He's, oh. he's reading directions and everything. And giving now. directions. Reading directions and giving directions and telling people he's what to do and what they can say. directions. He is a direction. He is one to follow. Yes. Yeah. You know, when I, when I look at the beauty of you, you know, and I want to go back to uh, your Spelman days because I really always, oh. when I meet a graduate of Spelman, I got to, uh, HBCU in general, I got to be able to hear that, let that story be pronounced on my show. Talk about Spelman, why you went and the experience and the greatness you've achieved by being a graduate of Spelman. Oh my God. Rashawn, I heard about Spelman College in 1983 and there was a young lady, Patricia Johnson, who was the recruiter for Spelman College and her daddy lived right below my my daddy's house in Holly Springs, Mississippi, Reverend Graham. And he called his daughter. He said, hey, look, there's a girl over here that I want to come to Spelman. Uh, her daddy and them not going to have a whole lot of money. So just find her some money and uh, but come over here and I need y'all to recruit her and talk to her daddy. And she did. She came and um, she spoke with my dad and uh, assured him that I would matriculate and I would be okay and I would be safe and 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 it happened and my dad took me down to Spelman College in 1984 <laughs> and I graduated in 2009 I was a senior for 21 years I got down to Atlanta and lost my mind I got into the city with all these lights and got over there in that AU Center on Fair Street <laughs> and uh, the party became real. And then I fell in love with the theater company, Jumundi Productions in the city. And I began to work with them. And I didn't really care about being a music major anymore. I didn't really care about singing um, classical music. I thought I was going to be a gospel singer. Mm -hmm. And when I got to Spelman, they wanted us to do um a classical format and the method for really learning and studying music. And uh, when I got there, I was just like, what? I don't want to sing an aria. I want to sing to God be the glory, my tribute. You know, my dad come out, they, they want to hear English. I don't want to be singing no Italian. And so uh, just country, didn't really know. <laughs> and, uh, 
And so I got mad. I had one hour to graduate and I left. Chip Fields came through and she was going out in a play with Vicky Winans. And, and, um, and so I got in that play in 1991 and, and I left Atlanta with that one hour to graduate. I called my dad and them three days before graduation to tell them that I would not be graduating. Wow. And um, they were just undone. My dad was like, you're living in a bubble. Now you're going out here to chase a dream. And you never, do you know, actors come a dime a dozen. You're never going to be on a show. Nobody knows you. Get out of here. You're not going <laughs> to. And the more he said, you're not, the more I said, I'm going to show you. I'm right. going to prove it to you. Mm -hmm. I know that this is what I need to do. I want to do it. They won't let me sing for God. And, you know, our motto at Spelman was our whole school for Christ. I was like, our whole school for Christ? And you won't let me do a gospel song on my senior recital? Well, forget it. I don't want the degree. <laughs> and, I left. and I was, uh, I got out to California. I went out there to visit Chip for two weeks. I left 14 years later. And in that 14 years, you know, I sum it up to be two years, two, seven years, you know, like, so I, it was two, the first seven years I was learning one thing. The second seven years, I learned another thing. You sure did. And, um, and, and it was a, a it was completion twice for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. um, seven is usually the number of completion. So I had to run my course twice to get out of L.A. And when I left, I came back to Atlanta doing House of Pain with Mr. Perry. Mm -hmm. And um, and I went back to Spelman College and I marched and walked. Uh, I got that degree in 2008, December, and I marched in 2009. And I am a proud Spelman woman. And, um, and it was not just what I learned on the inside of the gates that make me the woman that I am today, but it was what they taught me on the inside that I applied on the outside of the gates um, that make me an even more proud woman. And, um, and it was those 14 years of labor out there <laughs> in LA that prepares me for today. You know, when, um, you know, I don't even like doing interviews because it just seems like, um, it's so much you want me to cram into 20 minutes when, um, you know, we're talking about 91 to 2021. 20, Are you kidding me? We're in a pandemic. It's so many jewels and elements to Catch you know, life and to describing it and to telling you how important everything is. Money is important. Faith is important. Uh, rejection is important. Health is important. Uh, wisdom is important. Uh, and wisdom is the principal thing. Um, so in all that I get, you need to get wisdom. You need to get an understanding. But wisdom is the principal thing. You know, uh, it, it, it just, uh, um, you know, when you when you get mature and, you know, I left Spelman College. I didn't want it. I didn't want a degree. Are you kidding me? All that money my folks <laughs> sacrificed, I had to do it. And I did. And, and it just feels so good to accomplish. You know, when I was in L.A. and I was saying, I'm a Spelmanite. But, well, I haven't graduated yet, but I am a Spelmanite. I right. went. I have one hour to graduate. You know, that's nothing really to brag about until you can say, I did it. I went back. I got my degree. And I am a Spelmanite. And it's not just Spelmanite. For college because you know I'm more of a, a bearcat at Russ College in Holly Springs, Mississippi, than I am a Jaguar at Spelman College. I know more about growing up on Russ College's campus than I do about growing up on Spelman's campus. But you know, I I had those institutions and of higher education, and I just believed in doing better and doing more and being exposed to more and you know now making a way for my siblings or my 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 nieces and nephews to have you know their dreams come to fruition you know so now i'm passing the torch if you will well you look fantastic cassie davis we're talking to cassie davis Patton.
Uh, Thank star, you. Co-star of Tyler Perry's House of Pain is the number Thank one you. show on African American homes in 2020. Thank it's going to come back this month. It's the eighth season of the show. Let's talk about yes. fame. Let's talk about fame and you, Cassie, because I know you humble. You don't. You don't. You don't not. You not want to want to get recognized in the grocery store. You uh you I remember you came on this on the Steve Harvey uh morning show you played nephew Tommy's mama and girl oh, and blew it you're up. You say that I got oh, oh I'm not supposed to say that. It's just it's still doing that. <laughs> that was a secret, and you guys didn't pay me all my money. Okay, the, the, I, I call Steve Harvey uh, the one of the richest men in the, men in the world. We're gonna pay you all your money now. Okay, would you be famous you. on Tyler Perry's House of Fame because you're famous in Medea movies? How did you deal with fame? How did you deal with that? Well, you know what, um, Rashawn, I really don't know. I really don't know if I deal with it. You know, I just like people. Mm -hmm. And so when I meet them out anywhere and they are talking about Ella or they're talking about Bam or they're talking about Tyler Perry, I welcome what they have to say you know i i feel like what they have seen um is in their house it, it becomes very personable to them and the messages i think hit home with their lives and so some people are very nice when they approach you and then there are some people who uh who trip and then you know you have to say hey wait man that's a character don't sleep now i don't don't don't, don't do that don't, don't you know i'm not always on tv I'm not always acting. It's not always a script. <laughs> yes, so sir. don't get slapped. But, you know, <laughs> but, but it is so wonderful to experience these things because these people are so wonderful. Right. Now, let's you know, when, when you met, so I don't know, I don't know that I'm handling it properly. I well, don't know. Well, you know, there's two types of fame for you because you, you know, you, you blew up in his plays, Tyler Perry's plays. And then. Yes, sir the TV show, and then the movies, which became international, which also put you on the big screen. The Medea movies, that, the, what you feel is most impactful in your career, the, Medea, the plays, the Medea movies, or the TV show? Impactful, I would probably have to say um, uh, the movies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, I probably would have to say the TV show. Mm -hmm. um, the thing I enjoy the most, I would have to say, is the play. The, or the plays, you know, just to get that instant gratification and to be there live in a in a building. Rashawn, I, I always describe it like I'm in a building with 10,000 people wow. and they don't know each other, but they're all laughing at the same time. They're all crying at the same time. And then I'm sitting next to a mastermind, Tyler Perry, as Medea, and he just orchestrates, directs. If there's something on the stage that goes wrong, he can handle it. If there is a fight in the crowd, he can handle it. If there's a heckler in the crowd, he can handle that. You know, if he's sad and we need to finish us, you know, the show early, he can handle that. You know, so just to be sitting on stage with a mastermind has just really ah, been the treat of my whole career. So I I love all the mediums. I love plays. I love TV. I love movies. Um, and I think the best thing for me is his work ethics. And, um, and he means business when he shows up. So if you have your script... Uh, 10 days before or five days before, or if he calls you the night before yes. and says, Hey, look, I thought about something and I'd like to put you in, just be ready. And so th that, that's what I really appreciate about the, about the three entities that I work in. Well, let's talk about TV before we wrap up here. Cause I want to make sure I, I, I've been hyping it, been promoting the eighth season. What can we expect on this season of Tyler Perry's house of pain? It's on every Tuesday, 9 PM yes. central. It's coming 8 PM central, 9 PM East and West coast. Yes. Um, Rashawn, you should expect more of the same and then you can expect, um, uh, I just think that because House of Pain depicts life and art depicts life, mm -hmm. it's going to 
it's going to speak to those who are in broken relationships. It's going to speak to those young people who are feeling themselves. It's going to speak to older people who are feeling, feeling themselves. themselves. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so it's going to it's going to reach the gamut. You know, our we love the fact that we have that generation to generation from two to two hundred are watching the show, you know, the age ranges. And we actually have families sitting down watching the show together. So I think you're going to be amazed with uh, um, some of the storylines and the, the messages that we will bring to the forefront on this run, on this season. And again, it ties in, it ties the seventh season into the ninth season. Wow. So I'm excited about it. Well, my dear, thank you for coming on Monday. And also, huh? as a family, on and offset, we love each other. So I hope that you will experience the love that we have for each other, just individually. Well, and, I, I, and I, that, that's no doubt. That's no doubt because of the fact that uh, I had Keisha Knight Pullman on the show. Same, same. Also, in Spelman Knight graduate, graduate. Yes, and so, you know, y'all take it over there. We're gonna do a big story on that, by the way. So be ready. Uh, I want to just thank you for coming okay. on Money Making Conversation. I really do. You're just Rashawn, fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I was so excited all week about. I'm gonna see Rashawn. <laughs> oh my God! But Rashawn, can we talk offset? I mean, you know, absolutely. Don't you want to help me do some things? Absolutely. And, and absolutely. I, well, you yeah, do. I, 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 will do, I will call you uh, tomorrow. Is that fine with you? I'll call you tomorrow. Uh, uh, yes. I will call you tomorrow and we'll connect. And my number is still the same. Absolutely. Yes, sir, I love you. You look beautiful. I love you. And it was a great Thank interview. You, sir. Thank you for so coming on Money Making Conversation. Thanks to you and your team. Thank you guys, everybody. Okay, cool. If you want to hear more or see Money Making Conversation interviews, please go to moneymakingconversation.com. I'm Rashawn McDonald. I am your host. Thank you.